does she move your body like I moved your body? But now I shine with your reflection on me. Hello from another tough day in my life. Um, I wanted to get some filming done today just because my boyfriend is at work. It's always just easier to talk to a camera when you're in the house by yourself. But I'm looking my absolute best. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I'm about to start my day with some Below Deck Med season six. It is a zinger. It is a zinger. If you're part of the Bravo TV cult like me, you will know that Below Deck Med is one of the best shows ever on TV. <laughs> no, the crew are really good. It's just a good time. It's really, reality TV for me really helps me just like switch off because it's not overwhelming for me. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna do that. Please do a report, I have not moved. And I think that this is where I'll be spending the day, apart from an appointment I have at one o'clock. And that's okay. That's a good thing. We love to see it. We love to see resting. I'm just so tired today. Surprise! Still haven't moved. <laughs> it's been four hours. Still in bed, still in my dressing gown. Still got my baby boy. Still watching Below Deck. I've got to move in a minute to go to my appointment. Third espresso of the day. I'm, a, I'm an espresso drinker. What can I say? Mm. Do you ever kind of like develop, I don't know, something about yourself that you do or that you like or like you get a new hobby or you start liking a certain type of food so much that it's like almost personality trait and you like love it about yourself? <laughs> I love that I drink espresso. I love it. There is nothing, nothing, not a thing in the world that makes me feel more powerful and interesting and and just like rounded than being in a group of people like at work. If my boss is like, oh, I'm going to the coffee shop. Does anyone want anything? And I go, just a double espresso. Nothing makes me feel more like a bad bitch. Let's go. Off to therapy. Does she move your body like I moved your body? Yes, I want to know. Yes, I want to know. I want to know. If you don't sing the song lyrics in like a really flat British accent, you're just doing it wrong. I M O. There's your tip of the day. Find, it's a good way to laugh at yourself because it's very funny. <sighs> good for you, you look happy and healthy. Not me, if you ever dared to ask. God, I wish that I could do that. I've lost my mind, I've spent the night crying on the floor. <laughs> Bathroom. So unaffected, I really don't get it. back from therapy it was one of those ones where the time just flies by one thing that we were talking about was like this thing that weighs on my mind at the moment in that i feel like the pandemic has made me acutely aware of the fact that what i do is non-essential because kind of like our whole worlds right have been split into um essential and non-essential and it's it's difficult to sort of like find purpose in what you do when you're non-essential you're sort of like I always remember one time in Sex and the City Carrie describes it as whipped cream like oh in a recession it's not a good time to be whipped cream and I think in a pandemic it's quite confronting to be whipped cream because you're not like necessary for the world's like fight against the virus or whatever um anyway we were talking about that and sort of how that's relating to some things I'm feeling. But it's also interesting that we find it hard to reconcile the importance of the non-essential in life and in money. Because, you know, if you're trying to, it's sort of like that thing, if you're paying off debt 
then you shouldn't have anything enjoyable. Like that's sort of the idea. Like if someone's paying off debt or trying to get out of debt or trying to improve their finances and they're buying coffee or they're buying this or they're buying that. It's sort of where the coffee argument comes from. Like we shouldn't be buying coffee because it's non-essential. So we should just be living our lives with only the essentials. Whereas I'm kind of starting to wrap my head around the fact that there is necessity in a different way, but there is necessity in non-essentials, in discretionary spending, in luxuries. You know, luxuries are different for every person. So whatever luxury means to you. And I think embracing that can actually free yourself of a lot of guilt or shame around spending because we're sort of taught that the non-essential is bad and to have the non-essential means you're greedy or overprivileged or whatever. And you know, the privilege conversation is very nuanced and that's not to take away from that. And we should recognise that for sure. But, you know, if we want to be all Abraham Maslow about it, <laughs> the hierarchy of human needs, things that are beyond food and shelter also matter to our sense of self and our happiness and our joyfulness. And so I think giving yourself the permission to have those creature comforts whether or not you're paying off debt, whether or not you're trying to improve your financial situation, whether or not you've got money in the bank. It's not something that's only reserved for people that have endless amounts of money to be able to, to have. Do you know what I'm saying? Back on the couch, watching below deck Just making some dinner. Why is no one talking about the fact that pumpkin is savoury melon. It's so similar to a melon, but it's savoury. Why is no one calling it a savoury melon? Seriously. I think, honestly, that's, that's a missed trick. So I've just made some um, artichoke rocket and parmesan dip. I'll put the ingredients on the screen. I literally just blend it up in this little mini KitchenAid blender. It was like 160 bucks or something. And it's one of the best things I've ever bought. And I make all my dips in it and I never buy dips from the shops anymore. So it's gonna form part of my dinner this evening. I'm gonna like smear a bit of that onto a plate and put some salmon and roasted pumpkin on top, which I'm a very excited about. Seasoning my salmon with this island marinade from Maybu Maybu, uh, really cool indigenous owned business in Melbourne. So just got the roast pumpkin, the dip, some tomatoes, cause I'm really having a moment with tomatoes, the salmon fillet, some spring onions, and I'm just, you'd think I'd be done, but I'm having two eggs as well. So now I'm just gonna eat this. Um, watch some Below Deck. the energy to do DIY projects. I see people doing stuff like staining tables and building things and doing little home projects and I'm like how do you bring yourself to start doing that? Like I know a lot of people be like oh but it's really therapeutic and I'm like I'm sure it is but loads of things are therapeutic but I still can't make myself do them so I'll never really find out. I wash my clothes and then they need washing again like the aud the audacity of my clothes to need washing again when I washed them a week ago it's just fucking beyond me to be honest you tied a rope to me you're blessing me every day I was down with an illusion like a sparrow with broken wings but now I shine Hello. <laughs> 
9.24. I'm not home yet, and I've got a meeting in six minutes. <laughs> Guess I'm joining my meeting like this. Also had a package come, which is going to be my treat for when I'm done with my meeting. Thanks. I dangerously close to finish my workout and just made it, so... <laughs> a pause. <laughs> a pause. <laughs> Yay. Love this for me. Oh yeah, not a fucking chance. Welcome to my office. In a last minute change of plans, I'm actually working at my job today because I had a quick meeting at 9.30 that I was just gonna jump on and then have my usual freelance day. But we decided it would make more sense for me to work today. So I'm gonna do that today and then like switch my days around a little bit. But yeah, so come along on a work with me day, which is, literally gonna be me sitting here typing and having meetings. <laughs> but that's okay. We can like have a, an apple together later on and some lunch. Also, how much do you love my tailbone cushion that I think my cat's been sitting on? Um, this is the only way I can sit down at the moment with my um, tailbone pain. So I ordered some padded shorts for roller skating because I recently fell, smashed my tailbone. I mean, if these aren't the most aesthetic things you've ever seen. There's padding here and here. I just can't hurt myself ever again, basically. So back to the theme of this week, essential versus non-essential. It's really hard to know how much non-essential spending is okay. A lot of it comes down to permission. So a bit like I said earlier, the coffee argument of, oh, millennials can't buy property because they buy too much coffee. And it's kind of like, stop shaming us for spending some money on enjoying our lives. Life is to be enjoyed and money is to be spent as well as saved. Splitting money that comes in, for example, between spending and saving, allowing yourself that discretionary amount on a sliding scale of whatever's possible for you is really important. It's a bit like food. And I, I compare things to food a lot because it's really, I find it's a, there's so many overlaps with human behaviour in terms of the way that we consume food and the way that we spend money. We're conditioned to spend a lot more of our time and energy thinking about the food thing than the money thing. But actually there's so many overlaps. And so for example, it's kind of like, we don't just eat food to survive. We eat food because we enjoy it. And there's, you know, there's food that we eat because we're hungry and there's food that we eat because we enjoy it. And there's food, there's both. And it's the same with spending. We don't just spend the things that we need. We spend some money on enjoying our lives as well. But just like you can't eat cake every single hour of every single day for the rest of your life, you can't spend and spend and spend and spend and spend to enjoy your life. But the hardest part, and I think it's something that we're always juggling, is where's the line? On some level, non-essential spending, you know, is spending that is discretionary and that serves those other needs on the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs is necessary. So in some ways, the non-essential is almost essential. But to what extent? What are the markers that we can look out for in making sure that our essential, non-essential, and then, you know, the, the surplus, which is where savings happen, are balanced? I will be digging into it in this week's newsletter. So subscribe if you haven't already. Again, as always, if you are subscribing late, so after the newsletter has, got, has gone out, you do get access to all past newsletters as well. That is the end of today's vlog. Thank you so much for joining me for vlog number two. And I would love it if you liked and subscribed because it really supports the channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.